This podcast is rated S for spoilers. Listener discretion is advised. Don't forget to view our spoiler-free companion video on our Half Past Podcast channel on YouTube. Half Past Podcast. This is episode 13, the movie review of The Man from Uncle. I'm Graham Ricks, and here with me is my friend and co pilot, Ian Jones. So let's have a better week this week because, wow, that <laughs> aftertaste, that Fantastic Four aftertaste. Yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic oh. Four. It was so bad. But I'd like to thank everybody for downloading, though. Holy crap, did we get a, a peak. spike? We yeah, did, uh, we that did was great. We did better than the movie. <laughs> uh, so I was reading this this week. I was checking out an an article on Forbes by this uh, film their their film guy Scott Mendelson. Yeah, and he was talking about how badly Fantastic Four plunged on the second weekend. <laughs> which i think i think wasn't a surprise but it wasn't no. like it wasn't actually the worst drop of all time but the thing that blows me away is you guys have to look up scott mendelson he has the creepiest photo if if there was like a missing kid in your neighborhood <laughs> like this would be the guy to go after and i'm sure that's like not the case and maybe he's like a good guy but he's like got the creepiest <laughs> smile Oh man! He's got I'm like the you know, I'm going to take over the world smile. Like, <laughs> you'll never suspect me of the bomb, Mister President. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> the trailer for this week is Hitman Agent Forty Seven. Now, have you played the game? Yes, at all. I have. I think I played like the original game and that was it and it was a real fun game it was just kind of like a third person shooter but like there was a lot of sneaking around and everything which uh doesn't seem to be happening that much in this movie yeah he uh is out in the open a lot it, yeah. you know and i remember there were a couple of times too where the games got really repetitive like you never went out like if you went outside it was always raining yeah so I'm hoping there isn't like too much of that. Yeah, we'll see with that. And it it looks like a I don't know. It definitely is like a popcorn munching movie. Like it doesn't look right, like it's yeah. gonna be very good, but it's probably gonna be fun. Yeah, you know, from the the cut of the trailer, I think probably makes it look better than it's going to be. But yeah. I still want to check it out. Yeah, we'll have to we'll check it out and see what it, how good it is. Um, the only thing I think is interesting about this is I think I could already see a cork. Oh yeah. In the trailer. And that's when he's with that that woman and she's obviously also went through the same program as he did. But it seems like she knows nothing. And then like all of a sudden she has these abilities. As if she really didn't have to learn them, and that already kind of bothers me. So she she goes full out Jason Bourne. Is that the yeah. thing you're concerned about? Yeah, and so I'm not uh I'm not so sure about that, but we'll see what happens. Well, as long as she contributes in some way, it definitely know. looks like that's going to happen. All right, okay. Yeah, it, it definitely looks like she's going to contribute. I think probably, you know, third act kind of thing. She'll probably be there. Well. Okay, so the thing that's annoying there, and I'm going to call it right now, I'm going to say that Agent 47 gets into a fight at the end of the movie, and he's about to die, and she shows up with like a two-by-four and saves his ass. Because that's how it always goes. <laughs> like, you know, the girl shows up and like saves the dude in Freddy vs. Jason and a bunch of other yeah. terrible movies, and it's like, well, wait a minute, where did this, like, it wasn't like Rebecca Ferguson, yeah, who now right. is, like, She's the gold awesome. standard yeah. for how these leads should be. We'll have to see how it is, man. Um, 
I, I don't know. That's, it was definitely interesting, though. We'll see how it is. Yeah. She's going to get into a forklift or something, though, and say <laughs> some, something that really doesn't have an explanation. Like, she can just drive a semi. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> she had her. She has that truck driving license in her back pocket. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we spent enough of time with yeah, this intro right. and this trailer here, so let's go ahead and get into the movie review. All right. In the 1960s, ex-criminal turned CIA agent Napoleon Solo teams up with a KGB operative to take down a mysterious agent that deals in nuclear weapons. This movie's directed by Guy Ritchie. He Guy also Ritchie. did, yep, <laughs> he did Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, yeah. and the Sherlock Holmes movies, and that Snatch movie. I I like the Sherlock Holmes movies. I, I'm surprised. Do you not like the Snatch or two, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels? Uh, you know, I was, I, th- I, I wasn't a huge fan of Lock, Stock. That's a but shame. I like that one. Snatch, I actually thought was pretty cool. It it, it actually surprised me because I think that was the first time I really saw uh, Brad Pitt in anything. Oh, okay. Uh, he used to be married to Madonna too. So yeah, yeah, he was married tr- to Madonna. We'll try for like... not to hold that against him. <laughs> he was married like, to Madonna for like eight years. It's like what do Guy and... Ritchie and Charles Barkley have in common? He not think... much, right? You would think some of the movies that he's done was probably one of the worst decisions of his life, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Being married to Madonna, that sounds terrible. And I don't even know why, yeah. but that sounds awful. Well, she got that British accent, I think, because oh, she, yeah. well, she married him for those eight years. <laughs> <laughs> That's... All right, so we're starring, it's uh, starring Henry Cable as Napoleon Solo. Awesome name. Yeah, he was in The Count of Monte Cristo, The Mortals, and that Man of Steel. That's right, he's Superman. He is Superman. Never a bad hair day. Nope, he or, always looks great. <laughs> for Mr. Cavill, he never has a bad hair day. And you know, wouldn't it be nice to be in a movie where you could just wear a bunch of suits? Yeah. Like, that's awesome. He had like 10 suits in this movie. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. Army Hammer as Ilya. He was in the Social Network, J. Edgar, and the Lone Ranger movie. Oh, yeah. yes. Social Net and Lone Ranger. He's named after baking soda, I think. Right? <laughs> he's he's named after <laughs> the baking soda or maybe the deodorant version. You know, what? what did they do with him in this movie? For instance... Superman is not a small man. He's like 6'3", right? Yeah. Why does it look like Army Hammer is like a head taller than him in this movie? Could have just been how they were standing him. I I mean, it's weird because you're right. uh, Henry Cavill is not a big... I'm sorry, he's not a small guy. No, he's not. And for him to be referencing this giant Russian... Yeah, Maybe they had him on... (laughs) Maybe they, they just had him on about, some boards. <laughs> they keep talking about him being a giant, and he looks gigantic <laughs> in the movie. But I know for a fact that he's not that much taller or larger than Superman. So it's just like such a weird thing. I was like, man, why does he look so much bigger than him? Next up, we have Alicia Vikander as Gabby. She was in the Seventh Son movie with Jeff Bridges. Ex Machina and a bunch of short films. Yeah, she um, is about the most generic female I think they could have in a movie like this. Yeah. So I agree, definitely. It's it's actually kind of sad after seeing Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, you read my mind there. Yeah, it, it's she's just not nearly as good. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if this character Gabby was from the show, you know, because I've only seen a couple episodes. But I was gonna get into that later on. 
Yeah, it's it's an older show, and I remember watching it too. And I I can't I can't remember because it was when I was a kid. Elizabeth Debicki as Victoria. She was in The Great Gatsby and that Michael Fassbender Macbeth movie. Yeah, I th- I think I I definitely re- remember her from The Great Gatsby. Yeah. Luca Calvani as Alexander. His uh, it <laughs> seems like there's nothing. They are like he's just been in a ton of Italian movies. Yeah, so I've it, seen nothing. Yeah, well, well, wait a minute. You don't like Italian soap operas? Is that <laughs> the thing that you're telling me? Like, you're those aren't on your DVR next to you know? No, of course oh, not. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, Sylvester Groth is Uncle Rudy. He was in Inglorious Bastards and a bunch of German movies. Yeah, another German actor. Yep. Hugh Grant is Waverly. He was in Nine Months Notting Hill and Bridget Jones' Diary. You know, it's amazing <laughs> how he just got through that prostitute thing really with with no repercussions. <laughs> like, it was just like, eh, whatever. Well, I'm a white British guy. Sometimes I'm gonna those get away actors with just get away with stuff, man. <laughs> like, their whatever. careers just survive. Uh, but, you know, I... Mean, I I wonder. Definitely survived the Lone Ranger, I guess. (laughs) Well, (laughs) okay, good comparison. All right, I like (laughs) (laughs) prostitution and the Lone Ranger. Well, I don't know which one's worse. I haven't. uh, The one that there's that is actually a crime, I would say, (laughs) (laughs) but that might just be splitting hairs. Oh. Jared Harris is Sanders. He was in Lost in Space, Mr. Deeds, and The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. He played Moriarty in Sherlock Holmes. Yep. Last one I have here is uh, Christian Burkle as Udo. He was in Valkyrie and a Glorious Bastards, so he's uh, another German dude. Who the hell was Udo? I know, right? They actually gave that character a name, yes, Udo. they did. And he, he was the... Uh, the scientist guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's who, that's who it was. The Gabby's dad. So that little bit of exposition, then. Yeah, that he really the whole didn't that have the much... whole movie was hinging on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it he was really that guy. It was that guy. All right. Yeah. Now that we've uh, gone through these characters, let's go ahead and get into the corks and lights. All right, so now we're in our quirks and likes section. Let's go ahead and start with one of my quirks, and this is a very personal thing for me, but Solo is just a little too smug for me. <laughs> really? He's just, like, that's his character, and I get it, <laughs> but man, do I not like people that's that smug. <laughs> that's, hey, that's how Americans were in the 60s. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> right? Or... <laughs> Uh, so I just like every time I like from the very beginning of the movie to the end, his smugness does not change. He does not evolve at all. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> He's just a smug jerk the entire time. And I'm like, yeah, but that's just a little personal thing for me. All right. One of the other things I had was at the end of the movie, I'm trying to figure out and I wanted to ask you, is there a reason why? you would want to couple a warhead with another warhead. No, absolutely not. Okay, so no. I'm not crazy when no, I heard that? No, not. This is a huge issue, and yeah. and that's exactly what I was getting to with the scientist thing. Yeah. This is a huge problem with this, this movie. <laughs> you know, I, I would say the movie has one problem, and and this is it. This yes. is... It's what it's wrapped around, <laughs> and it it drove me nuts. I was like, "You're freaking kidding me!" Yeah, it, you know it. It ends the movie on a really kind of cool note because you get that that whole uh, "We finally got you" thing. Yeah, taking out the villain. So I I get that it it the way it ends is just kind of a cool way to do it, but the way that they do it with the coupling of the warheads. 
really kind of ticks me off. Like yeah, I, I was like, not, why uh, would you ever want to do that? There's no reason to do that. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm really glad you said that because I don't know that I was even going to really get that far into it. But you're absolutely right. It, you're right on the money there. It's it's the biggest problem with this movie. It, it doesn't make any sense why you would want to ever do that. And it's I feel like they could have just. I feel like as an audience member, I would have been okay with the whole, well, we've just found your radio signal and we sent it there. Right. Or a tracker or something yeah, else. With, or because, the, there's trackers throughout yeah, the entire movie. Because essentially their whole plan was to kidnap her and have a decoy. Yeah. So it makes no sense for that system to, to be in place, Yeah. which gives away the position of the real bomb. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all, and that is the largest part, or largest problem with this movie. And I mean, that was their whole getaway plan. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that was really poorly thought out. Yeah, it was not the best part of this movie. The other thing is, is I guess we're going to just have to start doing this, because... Yes. Let me Let me see if I can get this right. Need to steal a car... Uh -huh. No problem. There's keys. always keys in the visor. <laughs> Good read. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, There's always why keys is in this the a visor. thing in movies, man? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I um I almost think it's it's a good movie, but I almost think it should get a lower rating because <laughs> of the car keys in the visor thing. I can't stand when they do that and this one is especially bad yeah oh, because yeah. he's an agent and he steals things you think he'd know how to hot wire a car like we're okay with the whole putting the wires together thing which happens in the movie yes, when he it, steals the boat uh -huh. yeah so it's not like as an audience member i'm like well it's not possible for them to steal this car i don't know how to hot wire a car i don't know if you have to take those little wires and put them together whether that makes sense or not but at least you know, you're like, oh, well, he clearly knows how to do this. But I can't stand the keys in the visor. <laughs> Why does this keep happening? What I want to uh, find which movie was the first movie to do the keys in the that. visor. Because that's the one that started this problem. And I, it, I can't, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it. I like how we did this video on YouTube and like, what was it, a couple months ago? Yeah. That you were working on that thing? <laughs> and one of the most recent movies out, still a problem. <laughs> and it and it, maybe it will be forever. Yeah, I think it will be. It seems especially lazy in this one. Yes, it does. It doesn't make any sense why Solo couldn't just hotwire that damn car. Especially since, really, he had a lot of time. He had a ton of <laughs> time. Know? So, and I want to talk about that. That's actually one of the scenes I liked, minus that. So I was gonna. Well, yeah, get we'll into get we'll scene. get into that. I only have one other quirk with this movie, and I feel like you could replace Army Hammer with a Russian robot, and everything would still make sense. Oh, really? With him, <laughs> yeah. I, and I think I, that has to do with, <laughs> I, I think it has something to do with Army Hammer in general, but I don't know if that's acting or is that just him? Well, I don't know. I, I disagree with you. I, I, I liked him in this movie. Oh, I, I liked him. It's just, there was nothing there. There was, he was clearly like the most boring Russian KGB, like it was the stereotypical. That, that cannot be the case. <laughs> that just that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He cannot be the most boring Russian guy we've, that's, we've seen. That's on fine. Film. I'm talking about in a movie. Uh, <laughs> like, why is it they always convey these Russians as just nothing there? They emotion does not exist in Russia. Well, I mean, he did. You know. He did a really good, and I was going to get into this with my likes, but I mean, as far as the performance that David McCallum did all those years ago with this character, yeah, I mean, it's right on the money. So 
you could argue yeah, that's, that that's fine. The '60s version of the show led to the these maybe some of these similar characters and performances. Yeah, which which is is fine. I just every time I see that, I always kind of want more from these Russian characters because this happens in a lot of movies with these Russians are just kind of not there all the way. But go ahead and continue with your likes, man, because I'm done, or or with your quirks, quirks, because I'm done with my... uh, Well, I I said it uh, a little bit earlier, never a bad hair day or a black eye. And this could have been, maybe this could have been a sort of a style choice, but I mean, you know, they get into these chases, and, you know, even with the bloody nose that he got in the uh, interrogation scene, which I wanted to get into a little bit later, but... You know, even that bloody nose is like the neatest bloody nose on the planet. Yeah, it is. And it just seems like, you know, well, you know, they're throwing punches occasionally, but they're not really, you know, no one ever has bloody knuckles. and No. You know. Which is funny that you say that because they kept doing a shot with Army Hammer with his tick when he gets, you know, when he's yeah. about to lose it. And... I thought that that would occur during the bathroom scene where he beats up those three guys. I thought that he would, when he exited, I thought that there would be like a bloody knuckles when he exited out and he like fixes his jacket. Like I was expecting to say bloody knuckles and there was just nothing. So it's funny that you say that. Uh, The evil organization in this movie, what exactly would you say that they're up to? Other than shipping and drayage. I have like, no idea. You know, because it wasn't like, you know, chaos from Get Smart. You know, it, it wasn't like Spectre. No. This was this was a huge part of the movie that I had an issue with, and that was what the bad guys were up to. I mean, obviously, if you steal, if you're a rogue organization like the Syndicate, which, you know, we just saw, yeah. and you steal a nuke, okay, that might be enough to get... America and Russia to come together. Yeah. But there really was nothing after that. No, you kind of, you have no idea what their end game was and what they're doing. Yeah. Or, yeah. And there wasn't really, a, and you know, there's a submarine at the end of the movie, which I would imagine maybe has something to do with the sequel, but they don't address yeah. that at all. No. So, I mean, basically there are a bunch of bad guys who go to like horse races and race cars but then they also want to destroy the world. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to do either of those things if the world was destroyed. Yeah. So, so like, the designer clothes and everything sort of go away. Like, they don't seem like live in a volcano base bad guys. No. Uh, so, I guess the, the other thing is, and this this goes back to even the show, but... I find it really odd that the top American agent and the top Russian agent are working for a British dude. <laughs> yeah, it, I just it's weird. Uh, the only reason why they do that is because at the time those were the world powers, I guess. Yeah, I just don't see them taking crap from a British guy. No, no, you know? they, they wouldn't. If you really think about it, back then. Like Britain was like the the power back then. You know, we really the Americans and the Russians are the ones that kind of battled it out after World War Two, and then then it then somebody emerged from it. But back then, British people, you know, the British government and everything, they were the power. And I, I don't know, it's definitely a weird thing, cause especially with these characters like Solo. And Ilya, you, you would definitely think they wouldn't take any crap from some British guy. But Yeah. Eat some crumpets and tea and get out of our way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this character, Gabby, at what point did you figure out that she was working for Hugh Grant? Because I, I thought that was really <laughs> obvious from the second we saw Hugh Grant. I, um... I actually didn't notice, to be honest. I did not notice until probably, um, it was probably right before you found out about it. 
Like, it was like that late in the game for me to figure that out. And uh, I definitely knew that there was something weird about her and something off about her throughout the movie, but I never really thought that she would just betray both of them or that she was working for them. Huh. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Uh, You know, the other thing is, and, you know, you already mentioned the keys and the visor, maybe something else that needs to be on this list or... Maybe there just needs to be a car list in general for movies. I know we've talked about that, but... Yeah, another, we need to do that. Another ridiculous car crash. W- yes. That no one should have walked away from. No airbags. Yeah. She should have been dead as a doornail. Oh, yeah. Right? Especially Gabby. Yeah. Because she was handcuffed also. Yeah, into a steel, whatever that thing was. Yeah, so you think like she'd have break, broken arms and everything because she's like <laughs> she's handcuffed to the yeah. bar, and then this thing flips over and crashes. Like there should have been way more damage than what we saw. She's, so uh, yeah, you're yeah, right. She's totally fine in the next scene. Yep. All right, that's it for me. All right, I saw your corks. Okay, yeah. well let's get into the likes. All right, what you got? Well, first thing is I really did kind of like the off-road chase scene at the end of the movie. And it had this this style to it, which is another one of my likes about this movie. Because Guy Ritchie has this charm about him when he does this movie. It's extremely stylized, and I really like it. I like the way it looks, and I like the way he he films it, and the way he cuts it, and the way he edits it. And so I get that from the off-road chase scene and also when they finally storm that compound or whatever and you get this really cool creative montage, which he does in his movies anyway. Yeah, it's definitely a nod to the show too where they're doing split screens. and. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that scene in particular. And I also enjoyed the whole playing with time thing that also Guy Ritchie does anyway. But I do like how you see a scene and then it kind of goes back and you see the scene shot a different way or you so you're hearing more audio. But there is no there's really not hiding anything from you. So you see like for instance when you find her and you see the the ring on her hand, there's just that shot before you find out that she's been working for Hugh Grant this whole time. You know that's there, but then it still does the callback right afterwards to show you the rest of the information. So he's giving you some things and then not giving you others. And I really thought that was a really cool aspect to this movie. And I also enjoyed uh, probably my favorite scene in the movie is the one we were talking about earlier, where... He's in the boat, and he's just like, "Hold on, cowboy!" And then he, and then he, (laughs) but he's already out because he fell into the water. (laughs) And then he and he swims up, and there's just that whole scene is just that entire sequence is just great. And I love how he's just sitting there having wine, and you're seeing all this crap (laughs) happen. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that is that is absolutely one of the best scenes in the movie. And that's oh, yeah. like that's where I think you really go from I think being entertained to liking the film. Yeah, it it has <laughs> cuz there's a charm like that through the entire movie, which is what I really love about it. And that scene really shows it it shows it on a level that's higher than any other part of the movie. The other scene that I enjoyed was the scene with where he's where they strapped that doctor dude to the. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, <laughs> that was... scene was hilarious too because even just his reaction to the electrical impulses gave me a chuckle because he was just like ah and that was and that was, <laughs> that was his reaction <laughs> and then. I love how they leave him in there and they're trying to figure out what to do with him. And he just like kept right. his on fire because he's just that freaking glitch that was happening throughout the rest of the scene is now fixed. And it's just, yeah. And the thing was just left in the arms of 
And so, I, I mean, that's stuff like that is what gives this movie this charm to it that really sets it apart from even just the movie we just saw with Mission Impossible. So even though it's another spy movie, it's clearly a different spy movie. And so I, I really enjoyed that about this movie. And that's actually all my likes. So what do you got? All right. Well, yeah, both of those two scenes are in there uh, for sure for me. Uh, you know, I I really liked the performances from the two stars of this movie. I, I thought they were a really good homage to uh, the original show. Yeah. You know, was, uh, Henry Cavill was really doing a really good take on how Robert Vaughn played at Army Hammer. I thought did a good job with with doing a similar performance to how David McCallum did. Yeah. And I was surprised he he didn't show up at some point in the movie, but he doesn't do a little cameo, which, you know, maybe that's maybe that's a good thing. You know? Yeah, I think that's probably a good thing. Sometimes those cameos are just a little too obvious. Yeah. The uh the whole movie really is filmed and feels like it's in the 60s. So Yeah. They, they did a really good job, I think, with the uh, color time and, you know, just with all the sets and little pieces and, um, you know, just a lot of little details that I think looked really good and it just felt like it was filmed in that era. Yeah, they did a very good job with this. And, I mean, I'm biased anyway because I just like Guy Ritchie and it just has that feel to it. And I think he's... He really does a good job with this. You know, the evil, the villain of this thing, Victoria, uh, I actually really liked her, and and I thought it would have been cool to see her a little bit more. You yeah, know, she's like, not in it very much at all, and it's kind of weird because when at the very beginning of the movie where they're describing her character, they talk about how she's as lethal as she is beautiful or whatever and you kind of really don't see that in there because she's just not in it that much so seeing more of her would have been nice and we're definitely not going to see her in a sequel so right yeah <laughs> unless she learned how to fly <laughs> uh yeah so i you know i think uh, i was hoping for a little bit more action but I, I really liked how the whole thing was, you know, cut and put together. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd really like to see a sequel for yeah, this. Yeah, and I, I think we're definitely going to get one with the way the movie ends. So I, I think we'll get a sequel. And I, I would like to see a sequel, too. I think it's going to be... I actually enjoyed the movie, so... All right, you ready to rate this thing, then? Yep, let's get into the ratings. So the things that I have to say about this movie is it it has lots of of a Guy Ritchie feel to it. It's extremely stylish with really just great characters. The only drawback to this movie is the story is actually really simple. It, it's not much complex to it at all. And I'd actually say if you like Guy Ritchie, I definitely think you should see it. If not, it's definitely a really good rental, like really good. And so I'm going to go with see it, rent it. Yeah, I think this film really really works i think it it has one shortcoming which is it's its story is simple like you're saying but i think yeah. it makes up for it in different ways and yeah so it is a really stylish era piece with um you know 60s era piece yeah and i think it's definitely worth seeing i think the performances that are there are really good yep and it's it's a lot of fun yeah it is a really fun movie and I definitely think a lot of people would like to see it. So it's it, it's really good. All right, so I guess we're going to go ahead and uh, sign out here. Yeah, log out. So I'd like everybody to please see us at, uh, or visit us at halfpastpodcast.com. See us. Yeah, see us. All right, see us. <laughs> Show up to our houses and stuff. No. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> G will open the door in his boxers. Oh, so, geez. hooray for that. <laughs> you can see his Ninja Turtle underwear. 
<laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, good. <laughs> like us on Facebook. Rate us on iTunes. We're on Stitcher and Libsyn, and boy, do I love that Stitcher app for the iPhone. <laughs> You'd think they're paying us, but they're not. They aren't. <laughs> and I was not happy with Stitcher because it wasn't yeah, that long ago. Yeah, at the ago. beginning, they were messing stuff uh, up. Like, it wasn't... I it wanted really to. It wasn't working, and then yeah. they're just like on top of it now. Yep, the app is great though for the iPhone. I don't know about Android. Do you do you have it on yours over there on your Windows? Well, no, phone? I I have a Windows phone. I'm oh. one of the few. People. You're one of the you're one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> one of the few people that has a Windows phone, but there's one advantage is I don't need an app. It's built into the OS. All right, fine. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> so I, all I have to do is just look up our podcast and it pops up. I'm going to punch you in the face the next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Email us at halfpastcast at gmail.com. That's halfpastcast at gmail.com. Go ahead and give us an email. Let us know people are listening. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes <laughs> we wonder. We did get a lot of epi- uh, downloads last week, so yeah, we did, and uh, it's like email apparently sometimes. people are listening. Is anybody listening to this? I don't know. Uh, or are we just talking to ourselves? <laughs> uh, tweet us at Half Past Podcast. Uh, we also have individual accounts up there too, right? Yep, we do. Half Past Jones, that's me. I'm just at Graham Ricks. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> this guy over here i'd like to thank everybody for listening and thank you for your support next week we have agent 47 hit, hit man. man huh hit man <laughs> better hit some people oh he better and then like after that man we might have a little break here coming up we're All right we're like 13 episodes in with this one time to hit that beach yep so we're gonna end up going into our fall season after that which is really something else yeah this is the half past podcast i'm graham ricks jonesy see you next week